Hello, Battle Right fans, and welcome to Champions at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333, with replays to cast. More replays, most of which mine, since it's kind of hard to find people's replays here. But yes, replays! So, starting off with a match that I played a little while ago. So, me as Bako, with Anofo playing Ashka, Tryhard Taco playing Shifu, who I've played quite a few times, and. I recall they seem to be pretty good, so I, I imagine this will be pretty good, although admittedly they are grade 7 in this game, so we'll see how that goes. And Kazikami as Jade. So, just getting that first battle right choice. For the most part, when I was playing Bako, I did find that the Bulwark like weakened, the so recast for the weakened was one of the better choices, particularly when you have a Shifu, for instance, coming at you. So, that was pretty much my motivation there. Anofo going for Searing Flight, sh well, Searing Flight pulled down and Fireball, so they're probably going to go for the shield next round. Anyway, I'm getting, I'm trying to split up the two, and it actually worked out. So, at this point, Try Hard Taco giving Anofo a bit of a bad time, but really it's the other way around. Took too much damage in order to deal with anything that Anofo was going to throw at them, and now... Night shield coming out from me, finishing off Kazikami. Not a bad ultimate cast, but it, that's the point where you really want to cancel it because, well, there's a shield. I mean, shield goes up. That's the thing with Bako. I mean, I main Jade, so whenever I'm fighting against a Bako, it's always in the back of my mind. Whenever you're sniping her ultimate, just be careful. Just make sure you have your finger on that cancel button because otherwise, you're probably going to die or at least get stunned or generally have a hard time if you're not super aware. That's true for anyone with strong counters, but particularly Bako, it's just Bako is nuts like that. Anyway, so Bako, sorry, not Bako, I, by player name. Let's see, both players going straight to the center again, and this time red team doing a much better job taking the center right at the start, but a good reflect from my, me. I'm not sure if it's best to go for third or first person, but that's the side. Dryer Taco, actually both red team just going straight after Anofo, targeting Ashka because that's what you do. Ashka is terrifying if you leave them alone, and that's exactly what red team is trying to avoid. Nice little sneak around there by Kazikami, forcing blue team to split up, and Anofo should be able to get rid of Dryer Taco at this point, but I don't know, Dryer Taco with a few good moves around, I think they'll be fine. I think, he, yeah. Kazakami taking out Anifo and Try Hard Taco going down afterwards with Kazakami probably going to go down shortly, but we'll see. It really depends on how they're going to avoid that, which they don't because I'm pretty sure they had no avoidance. They just used stealth. Yeah, they were done. So unfortunately, sorry about that. Kazakami taking that out, or taken out rather. So round three. So at this point... Kazukami going for basically trying to probably stealth up, disable, and then actually no disabling shots. Up. I haven't seen very. I think one or two, maybe. Kazukami is going for the disabling shot firepower, but not really doing much. Dryer Taco going for all the kunju, kunju charges, kunju healing. That's a pretty solid choice. Typically, that's what Shifu will go for. Kunju charges are, I think, the most common. At least at this level, they are pretty much the most common battle right to choose. And Shadow Fury going straight in while Anofo hanging back, playing the composition properly. Anofo, however, getting attacked by the Shifu. The Shifu kind of out on their own, but looks like it's not going to matter. And another good reflect. I mean, that's what I mean. you got to be careful about that. Though Shadow Fury did kind of wait to the last minute there. And Anofo locking out the center. Another shield coming up. That was something that could have been canceled against. Kazukami could have canceled that. Didn't manage to do that. Trying to get out of the way, Sh should be... Okay, over to the north side. Kazikami not able to hold the center, and at this point, just desperate, but not able to do anything, and Anifo finishes them off. So that was 3-0. A bit of a landslide, I realize. But don't worry, the rest of the games will be much more even. Anyway, so next match is going to be another one with me. Most of these are going to be with me. There is one that I got that someone sent to me that I believe is much higher grade than I am, so that should be very entertaining when that comes out. But that'll be the last replay I cast. So the next one's going to be me 
as Jade playing my main. So, me as Jade with TZ Bows as Lucy. Lucy Jade compos compositions are pretty cool. I was actually playing one earlier today, and that was interesting. Though a little bit tricky. I mean, basically, it's a matter of whether or not the Jade can manage. Well, both both of them really are trying to get the opponent team to just get off them. That's really what it comes down to. They're both kind of trading off those duties. And with this team, Tesla Light with Shifu and Azale Sentinel with Ashka. So Tesla Light is obviously the one to be focused on. That's the one they obviously blue team is going to want to avoid primarily. Though Azale Sentinel is going to be difficult. I mean, just having the Ashka there, because that's the damage, you have to worry the damage. Neither Lucy nor Jade have a whole lot of things that can block or counter. I mean, obviously Lucy is healing, and Jade does have her disabling shot, but that's about it. And Jade going for Immaterial, or rather, Shed if you're going for Stealth, for Meterless Immaterial, which is really important against a composition like this, particularly with Ashka. And Shifu going for Healing on Impale. Ashka primarily trying to push up okay molten fist focus which is interesting probably going to try to wait until blue team's near a wall and then do the stunning because with a range pure like a range support team there's not much call for molten fist but anyway so at this point t boss getting focused very hard shadow fury kind of leaving them alone should be able to get rid of test light as soon as the counter's over there's another shot of m1s no no it looks like as light or test lights Actually taken out by a nice little snipe there. I believe that was a snapshot, actually. And, ooh, nice ultimate there from from Aziel Sentinel, and that's... That might be enough, actually. It's kind of hard to say, though. It's really going to come down to accuracy. Aziel Sentinel is not able to get out of there, getting rooted down, and that made a lot of easy pickings for both T-Boss and myself. So first round goes to blue team. Bit of a fight there. So, red team at this point, probably going to be focusing down me. Or focusing down, well, the Jade, Shadow Fury. I don't, like I said, not sure. First or third person. Let's go with first. We'll commit to that for now. So, they're going to go after me, most likely. I don't remember this game offhand, so the, I'm guessing they're going to do that. I mean, going after the healer is typical. You want to avoid healing. You want to make sure your opponent can't, you know, just stay in the game. But at the same time... I was kind of... I mean, they already focused down the healer, and that didn't work. We'll see. It looks like Aziel Sentinel definitely focusing... No, they are definitely focusing down Lucy. Not focusing on me too much. Aziel Sentinel actually taking me while... It looks like Tesla Light is focusing on getting rid of TZ Bows, but nope. TZ Bows gets out of there. Now they're focusing on me, but it doesn't seem like that's their main focus. I just happen to be a target of convenience. And at this point, Red Team getting a lot of damage. They were nicely lined up. I mean... Two snipes in a row that hit both enemies. That is really good for me. And at this point, it should be both both of them ultimate. Or no, it looks like Azil's in about. No, never mind! Third snipe in a row, winning the match with that too. Bit of a sacrifice on TZ Boss's part, but that panic, that last minute panic flax, should go back to that. Because the ultimate just barely kills TZ Bows. And then right afterwards, right at the very last frame, Panic Flash goes out and allowing the snipe to kill both. Although that was three snipes in a row. Red Team has been lining up here. I tried being reasonable. So that worked out very nicely for Blue Team. I was very proud of that kill, gotta be honest. But yeah, basically it was TZ Bows, Panic Flash just at the last second, and that did it. That was really what did the trick. And at this point, Tesla Light going for more healing. They have Impale healing and Kunju healing. Azil Sentinel going for Flame Strike healing, so we've got to be careful. I mean, we've always got to be careful because Flame Strike is stun and everything. I mean, especially me because of the snipe. Flame Striking a sniping Jade. That's actually kind of hard. You kind of have to call it. But still, if you can pull it off, that's a, that's a tricky thing to do. And especially with the healing on top of that. I mean, bearing in mind, of course, that Red Team has no dedicated healing. And there it is, right there! Nicely done, Azil Sentinel. That was a time where I needed to cancel, but I didn't cancel, so... There I go, I got hit, and Azil Sentinel managed to get healed. And another shot! Another one! I was really letting myself get hit by those. And I think Tesla Light's probably gonna finish... No, not even going for me. They just needed me out. They just need me out of TZ Boss's spot. TZ Boss getting enough damage. Once again... 
Jeez, keep getting hit by those flame strikes. And that left TZ Buzz with pretty much no health against a full health red team. I mean, the, that healing helped out, especially for Aziel Sentinel. Basically healed about 42 damage there for just about free. I think in one case I managed to hit with something, but basically no. TZ Buzz, ooh, nice. Vampiric Toxic, very nice. Pretty moderately typical battle, right? I mean, you get free healing. You're toxicing on every M1 hit, so that that's a good idea. That's what I like to do. And disabling shot missed from me, which is a little unfortunate because, well, it's disabling shot. No additional battle rights on it, though. Battle rights are a little focused on, I mean, as you can see, Blast Ball primarily. Just stun everything away from me. And it looks like... Well, blue team's sticking together. That's good. And avoiding the flame strikes, finally! As you'll Sentinel got one round for free, but hopefully at this point, blue team has learned. Hopefully I've learned. I can't remember if I learned at this point. And learned enough. I wasn't actually paying attention to that during the match, but it's definitely worth noting. Although, I'm a little bit surprised. I've noticed that TZ Boss not really doing a whole lot of clarity potioning. That's a very important thing that Lucy needs to do, especially when Ashka's on the... I mean, mostly with... Ignite is really the only thing. It's really more so if Ashka has the shield, which actually is not a battle right taken, so it's not really relevant. And... Okay, good. The game is not crashed. Another ultimate coming out there. I think that's a double killed ultimate. I went in for the EX... Well, EX Stealth, which is basically everything's immaterial. At this point, though, there's not a whole lot of good options. I mean... Can't really dodge that. Just used up the material on saving both of us, so there was no good option there. I mean, it's kind of stuff. I actually could show the cooldowns, but... Because, yeah, I'm the one character I could show the cooldowns for. Yeah, because at this point, it was just, I had to stealth out of there. I could have Blast Vaulted. That was actually the one thing that would have worked. Blast Vault into a proper snipe probably would have won the match. But that, or at least helped out. But that was like last second blast vault. It's always important to pay close attention to your cooldowns for that reason. Like that's, there is a reason, if there is a reason to pay close attention to your cooldowns, that's what it is. You want to make sure that you're just not losing because of those. It's really embarrassing when you do. Anyway, final round. See how this goes. And I mean, obviously I know how this goes. I played this match, but let's see how it goes anyway. And, hey, finally Disabling Shot hits. I usually open up with Disabling Shot, which is really more useful with the Desperado battle, right? A lot of people open with Snipe. I find it very predictable, very counterable. Whereas opening with Disabling Shot means, oh, hey, you just can't do anything off the start. And that was a nice Panic Blast, too. TZ Boss going for the battle, right, that gets the Splash Damage Panic Blast, which is very nice. And ultimate worked out okay for me, and TZ Boss, they, well, they're alive. Avoiding the flame strike nicely. Avoiding most of Ashka's stuff nicely. Asil Sentinel trying their best. I mean, it's two on one, and I've got almost full health. And ultimate's coming in there. By the way, this is before the patch, so Lucy's ultimate isn't quite as strong as it is now. That wouldn't have been a kill even with the new power, but it would have helped. At any rate... Asiel Sentinel desperately trying to deal with damage they can. Getting Cure Fire for the healing, but not enough healing in time. That's unfortunate. I mean, it's only four healing per hit, so there's not much you can do with that when you have, like, ten health. I don't like it. So yeah, that was a match that basically came down to keeping together in panics. I mean, that those panic flasks... I mean, obviously, at the end of round two, that was a big deal. Like, the Panic Blast for that helped out, but also the Panic Blast... Or was it? it was Panic Blast Explosion... Shoot, where was it? Oh, well, that one getting Ashka away. But then there was another Panic Blast Splash Explosion. Anyway, that's basically that match. It was an okay match, I think. Not the best. I think it was a bit embarrassing near the end, losing to just getting separated. That's always embarrassing. You never want to lose to get separated. That's just such a basic thing. But unfortunately, that happened. Anyway, next match. Me is Ashka. Last match is me. 
Next one's gonna be the one that was given to me. Which should hopefully be a lot more entertaining. Alright. So, we have... Oops. Me as Ashka Bad Hat Trick as Krog versus Dark Joy's Iva and Newhouskis as Older. Who went for time and her cooldown and... The typical jet. Okay, so that's the typical thing. You can use the jetpack twice. More oil, more fire. I have always wants that. I mean, the more oil you have, the more ignition you have. And speak. Well, I just don't think it's actually the ignite status. I can't remember exactly. It doesn't come. I don't believe it comes up in this match. It's just sort of there. Anyway, good firewall there from Shadow Fury. Getting older, separated, which should be pretty good. I have still distracting, or I should say, Dark Joy distracting Shadow. Me in the center. Committed to myself, or first person rather. So yeah, Dark Joy focusing me down in the center. Newhouskis, oh, sorry, well, Newhouskis getting attacked. Bad hat trick. It's kind of up to them. If they can stealth out from here. They should be okay, but it's gonna be tough. And I don't know if they will. I mean, this is the point where you really want to use EX stealth because the Crocs is EX stealth. You, pet, you incapacitate one of them, then you attack the other, trying to kill them. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. We had a good split up on older right in the middle there, but unfortunately that didn't pay off. So red team takes a solid first win. Second game, or second round rather. So yeah, I went for just flame strike damage. Not really any comment on bad hat trick. And the Searing Flight Shield, because people were focusing me down, that's a thing to do. And Newhouska's going for Time Bender Healing. Very typical thing, I find most olders go for that. I don't personally, but... I do find it's a thing. It's a thing people go for. And Ivy getting out of there. Flame Wall once again, stop Newhouska's from dealing any damage. Or minimizing the amount of damage dealt. Which is quite important. The same Shadow Fury just desperately holding people out. Not a whole lot of use of Searing Flight, though. Not a whole lot of shields. Unfortunately for Red Team, that Petrification was a good time to come after me. Not a great time to come after Bad Hattrick. So Bad Hattrick just able to deal some damage after getting out of the Petrify. Because Petrify is a shield. Like, that's the thing. When you use Petrify, that's kind of it. So, Krogor's down to the ultimate, but both members of Red Team are basically one hit away from death. So Iva does have that nice, or rather Dark Joy has a nice shield, but one more hit. Dark Joy goes down, Nuhauskas healing as much as they can, but gets hit by my ultimate and that's done. I mean, Nuhauskas, not really much they could have done there. It was really a matter of Bad Hattrick just kept them both focused. And I was able to deal some damage from the side, but really Bad Hattrick kept them both, both focused. But not able to deal as much damage as they would like. I mean, they probably were trying to come after me, but... Yeah, that was that was good play as a Mad Hattrick's part. Very nice damage there. And I'm going for healing naturally. Can't remember what these guys go for. I mean, we'll see in a sec. Most of the battle white choices so far haven't been particularly meaningful. I mean, they've been just adding a few things here and there, making you no know, a bit of extra damage here or there. Oh, well, there we go. There's a meaningful one. Sands of time, area damage. Not sure why they went for that. That's one of those things that I find more effective when your opponents are sticking together like glue. Which in this case, we're not. That's actually been a major weakness in our play. But we haven't been sticking together, and especially in this match, like when you have Croak or Jade, anything that depends, even Tayek to an extent, anything that depends on mobility or stealth, and Ashku is also kind of dependent on just staying out of the way, it's not super effective to use time, the Shifting Sands splash damage. Or sorry, Sands of Time splash damage. Because we aren't together. Pretty much any splash damage, same thing. And Older, desperately getting out of there, does have, I think, just the Flame Bolt, the basic M1 on the Time Bender, but didn't really matter. And now I've, well, Dark Joy, avoiding what damage they can, and actually doing a pretty good job of it. I mean, keeping Bad Hattrick more or less off them. Did lose their shotgun, though, and that, sh that one last attack there. One more shot will do the trick, and go for the, why did, why did you go for the Q? Why did you go for Flame Strike? That's when you want to go for the basic M1. But that does it. Bad hat trick. Throwing some venom for the win. Or at least for the round win. Nice kill there, though. So Dark Joy is going to. 
Man, Dark Joy has really kind of been the one setting the tone. Like, I feel like when we when they've won, it's really a matter of Dark Joy's been focusing down on me, dealing enough damage, and when they've lost, it's like they've been split up and Dark Joy have, hasn't been able to do a lot. I mean, Nahauskas is playing kind of a defensive, aggressive game. They're trying to rush forward with Time Bender. Not sure why. I mean, there's not a whole lot of burst damage. I guess my... I don't know. There's not a whole lot. Firestorm is about the only thing I can think of that I have. And for Crow, there isn't really anything you can catch with Time Bender. Unfortunately, wow, that's a lot of damage dealt to me right off the bat. Let's rewatch that. Sheer amount of damage. Getting stunned out, focused out, sands of time on top of everything else. And actually, that, that splash damage worked. Nice rocket as well. That's basically everything taking me out. Now it's up to Bad Hattrick, but man, good luck. Dark Joy's taking a lot of damage, but Bad Hattrick just used their stealth, so they don't have really any ways of setting up. Good call, they're getting us out to the side. Incapacitating, but hitting the incapacitated character, not sure why they did that. At that point, like, the thing to do would be to incapacitate older, then kill out. Like, incapacitate New House Kiss, kill Dark Joy, because New House Kiss has more health, so Dark Joy could just be slashed to death. And then go after New House Kiss afterwards. Like, incapacitate goes away as soon as you hit them. That's a really important property of that status. If you don't do that, you're gonna have that. Like, what just happened right there, that's what's gonna happen. And that ends up losing the match. But yeah, Crow can win 1v2s with that incapacitate. Super important. Incapacitate in general, it's just the way to win 1v2s. Because it becomes 1v1, and then it can work from there. And now for the ultimates. Okay, so Nahauskas expecting us to be close enough to do the Sands of Time thing. Dark Joy being a bit defensive. Taking the shield doesn't want to be killed during Machine Gun. I mean, granted, that's almost happened before in round three, I think. It wasn't quite Machine Gun after, it was done, but still. I can see why they'd go for that. And red team kind of together which is what they want to be. And once again, more that oil does not ignite. My mistake, but it is still lots of extra damage. And a lot of extra damage on me. I'm going for the healing. Bad hat trick, going one on two. Getting a nice stun on Dark Joy, should be able to finish them off. Yep, takes them out, the Venom Explosion finishes them off. And now it's two on one, although admittedly, Blue Team has very low health. Nihauskas has a lot of health. Nice little escape there by me, because that's well, I had to. And Ultimate coming in there, not really dealing a whole lot of damage. Now, Asuka's still way ahead by health. I mean, it's really a matter of if they can hit, but unfortunately, they're trying to deal with very mobile characters and not managing to hit Sands of Time as much as they need to. Especially not Sands of Time into Quicksand and doing all the splash damage, burst damage. That's super important, and that's not happening. A bit of it's happening, but Sands, but, I mean, Sands of Time is hitting. Quicksand's not hitting. Nice time, Benner. That was, I think, on... No, that was on... That was on Firebolt, that wasn't on Firestorm, and that's game! It was not really the burst damage they needed. Mind you, they also didn't recast it. Something I noticed, actually. They time mentored a lot, but didn't seem to recast a whole lot. Anyway, that was that. Okay game, I guess. So, last game for tonight. The last game of tonight is gonna be the one that actually involves people who know what they're doing. Presumably. I'm pretty sure it's a higher grade. Like, grade 12 or something. So, this should be good! Because I feel like these other games, there have been a lot of situations where it's just players aren't using their abilities. Which is not that entertaining, in all honesty. I'm sorry, I, I mean, that's, a lot of it's me. Like, I'm not, I'm still working up the raids, so, you know. Bit of a crapshoot from time to time. But, this should be good.